There's no right reason for loving mixed martial arts, because in a sport where both wrestlers and strikers can succeed, you're allowed to prefer one over the other. But some competitors have styles that are difficult to dislike, no matter how narrow or broad your tastes are. They're what we call scrappers, and the type of fighter who can't help but get involved in grueling and chaotic wars almost every time they compete. Hi guys, Tom here from MMA On Point. Not only do we have an absolute banger of a video today, but I'm I'm incredibly stoked to reveal that this video is being sponsored by Origin, the company that fuels the man himself, the machine, Mr. Jocko Willink. Today, they're offering a one-time 20% off of all Jocko Fuel supplements using the code MMA on point 20 at originmain.com forward slash Jocko hyphen fuel. Stick around to the end of the video to learn more about this awesome, awesome partnership. But for now, here are 15 most exciting scrappers in MMA history. Number 15, Carlos Condit. It's a shame that one of the highlights of Carlos Condit's career is marred by criticism, which paints him as a boring tactician. That was the game he played against Nick Diaz back at UFC 143, but it was a mere detour from the natural born killer's usual chaotic approach. Condit, as his nickname suggests, was a ferocious striker with a pendant for stoppages. In fact, his first 15 wins were all finishes and all within the first goddamn round. He even stopped seven guys in less than one minute. That's madness. But when they didn't fall so quickly, which is bound to happen once you begin meeting the elite, he was probably an even more compelling attraction. He had flashy yet fundamentally sound kickboxing, which was elevated by a never say die brawling style. And this was highlighted in battles with the likes of Martin Kampman, Johnny Hendricks, and Robbie Lawler. And it's those battles, not the Diaz one, that truly exemplifies who the real Carlos Condit is. Number 14, Joanna Janjacek. When Joanna Janjacek debuted in the UFC, the landscape of her division looked very different. Carla Esparza was the champ, and thanks to her tenacious wrestling, the likelihood of a fighter who relied exclusively on kickboxing taking her belt appeared, well, it appeared pretty slim. But as we now know, using the power of hindsight, that line of thinking was so incredibly far off the mark. Joanna just dominated her and then ruled the division for about two years. Years. But despite her domination, her style still lent itself to entertaining scraps, even when she was miles ahead on the scorecards. After she eventually lost the title to Rose Namajunas, she proved that she wasn't just a front runner with a spirited performance in the rematch. Then her magnum opus came against Wiley Zhang earlier this year. It was a ridiculous display of striking guts and violence. It's unquestionably the best women's MMA fight of all time, and it will probably be the fight of the year despite a serious host of contenders. Number 13, Don Fry. Don Fry versus Yoshihiro Takayama. That's it. That's, that's the entire argument. They're, you don't need anything more than that. So you want a little more context? Fine. Well, first, there's his initial stint in MMA, which was just awesome. Lasting less than a year from February 1996 to December, it saw him pretty much show up, get into firefights, and leave. On his debut, he won the UFC 8 tournament. It included a wild scrap against Gary Goodridge, where Fry showed how fun boxing in the clinch could be. He then had a great fight against Armory Batech at UFC 9 before returning at UFC 10 in a bid to win a second tournament, only to lose to Mark Coleman in the final. He did, however, win the Ultima Ultimate 96 tournament, which concluded in a absolute barn burner against perennial scrapper Tank Abbott. And that was his first MMA run in a nutshell, short, sweet, and full to the brim with disgusting violence. He'd returned to Pride a few years later, and while it wasn't as successful, he didn't lose one bit of that dog that made him such a fun guy to watch. And he proved that with absolute classics against Ken Shamrock and, yep, Yoshihiro Takayama. What an 
absolute fight. Number 12, Leonard Garcia. For casual fans, Leonard Garcia might be the least known fighter on this list, but that makes him no less worthy. Known primarily for his exploits in the WEC, he actually had an entertaining UFC run before that, including a fight the night against Cole Miller and a fondly remembered scrapped against Roger Huerta in a fight that helped Huerta become a star. In the WEC, he'd quickly earn a title shot after back-to-back -back knockouts, and while he would lose that title shot, that wasn't his legacy because he'd soon have that wild brawl against the Korean zombie. And while it ended in a controversial decision in favor of Garcia, it remains one of the best fights you'll ever see, regardless of promotion. Later, when the UFC absorbed the WEC, Garcia failed to make any headway aside from another controversial decision, this time against Nam Fan. But he was always fun even in a loss, like when Zombie got his revenge with a twister and Speaking of zombie, number 11, Chan Sung Jung. In 2014, the Korean zombie Chan Sung Jung began his mandatory military service, and it really was a massive loss for MMA. He had just suffered defeat against Jose Aldo in his lone UFC title shot, and it was a fight that saw him dislocate his shoulder. However, leading into it, he was rapidly becoming a must-see attraction. He had twisted Leonard Garcia, knocked out Mark Hominet in seven seconds, and dust Dustin Poirier in an all-time great brawl. And that was in addition to his WEC heyday, which featured, yes, that crazy fight against Leonard Garcia that I mentioned. And honestly, it was so good that the shitty, shitty decision will hardly really bother you. Now, since his return from service in 2017, he's never looked better, having bagged three highlight reel finishes against Dennis Bermudez, Renato Moicano, and Frankie Edgar. And while he did lose to Yair Rodriguez, it was perhaps the most dramatic and sensational fashion you will ever see. A ducking upwards elbow right on the final buzzer, which knocked Zombie out cold in a contest where Jung was about to comfortably win the decision. But decisions just aren't Zombie style. Number 10, Donald Cerrone. In MMA, Donald Cerrone has really found the perfect vocation to suit his character. An adrenaline junkie by nature, his idea of settling the nerves before a fight likely involves skydiving, rock climbing or some other death defying venture and he brings that same energy to the cage which is why he's leading the pack for bonuses with a staggering 18 and it's a good thing too because those accidental insurance premiums must absolutely suck regardless it's insane when you consider the sheer number of classic rules he's actually been involved in there was the melvin gillard bout where cowboy came back from the brink of defeat and knocked gillard out and of course his scraps against Jamie Varner in WEC and most recently those savage encounters with Tony Ferguson and Alexander Hernandez. And while he's certainly taken his fair share of losses, when he's mentally checked in, he's as entertaining as they come. Number nine, Max Holloway. Statistics don't tell you everything, but for Max Holloway, they highlight precisely the type of fighter he is because there are volume strikers and then there is Max, the man who has apparently modeled his approach on my usual strategy in EA Sports UFC 3, which is basically a whole load of button mashing. The video game. I would play the video game and be like, oh, look at this. I would try the combination. I'd be like, oh yeah, this kind of works. So let's try it. But in all seriousness, his stats are absolutely mind blowing. He's the leader in significant strikes with 2,173 with the next best, Yonan and Jacek, trailing by more than 400. He also holds the record for the most landed in a single bout at 290. This came in his masterpiece against Brian Ortega, but he's not impervious to catching his own licks either. And that's shown in the 750 significant strikes he's absorbed in his last six outings. So in conclusion, it's no surprise that he continues to produce staggering feats of athleticism and heart when he steps into the octagon. But with those stats, he can't do it forever. So enjoy it while it lasts, people. Number eight, Nick Diaz. Like his baby brother Nate, Nick Diaz's fight style is a product of his psyche. He believes that the best fighter is the guy who is left standing, not the one who can outwit their opponents to appease three judges. And it's with that mindset that he has produced magic 
over the years. And while there are too many fights to name here, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention his breakthrough showcase against Robbie Lawler, which was really the first time fans recognised he had hands to complement his slick jiu-jitsu skills. But speaking of jiu-jitsu, who could forget the legendary brawl on Gogo Plata against Takanori Gome, or his back and forth wars against the likes of Paul Daly, BJ Penn and KJ Noons. They will last the test of time, just like his legacy will. Number 7. Chris Lieben Since The Ultimate Fighter is sort of like a prison, but with a prize, it's no wonder some guys like Chris Lieben get a little crazy in there. From pissing on Jason Packer's pillow to drinking beer like it was water, his legacy could have easily equaled that of the Julian Lanes of the world. But like Lloyd Christmas, he totally redeemed himself. At the finale, he knocked out Thacker and earned his way into the UFC, then once in, he revealed his superpower, the ability to absorb headshots and apparently convert them into his own goddamn devastating offense. And the best example of this was during the most memorable run starting in 2010. First, he literally knocked Aaron Simpson around the cage and face first into a loss. He then triangled Yoshihiro Akiyama just two weeks later in an all-time great brawl before scrapping it out with both Brian Stan and Van Lay Silva in two of the most exciting one round spectacles that you'll ever goddamn see. Number six, Dustin Poirier. Aside from somebody that we'll talk about a little later, it's tough to find a fighter who produces award winning bouts against the elite at the rate that Dustin Poirier does. In his last eight, he's racked up six bonuses, and that could have easily been more, but his fight with Eddie Alvarez at UFC 211 prematurely ended after Alvarez landed an illegal knee. He would, however, win a rematch and get that award, earning himself a performance of the night for a wild, wild stoppage. And his career has been chock full of these kind of firefights. Down at featherweight, he and the Korean Zombie went to war, but it was when he returned to lightweight that we saw him at his best. And it really started with his fight of the night clinching win against Jim Miller, which kicked off a run where he was involved in five fight of the nights in just eight bouts. This included a plethora of infinitely rewatchable brawls against the likes of Anthony Pettis, Justin Gaethje, Eddie Alvarez, Max Holloway, and Dan Hooker. Madness. Number 5. Tony Ferguson It's no coincidence that virtually everyone who faces Tony Ferguson leaves the octagon looking like they were put through a goddamn meat grinder. That's simply something you just have to accept when you fight El Kikui. Like many on this list, Ferguson never fights with the decision in mind. He always looks for the finish, or at least he looks for the best way to carve up your face with his trademarked elbows. But he'll regularly put himself in harm's way in the process. And while a doctor or perhaps even a coach would never recommend his strategy, I'd be lying if I said it's not absolutely captivating. You have the Anthony Pettis war, the Edson Barboza bloodbath, the Lando Venata madness, and the Donald Cerrone scrap where he left Cowboy looking like the Elephant Man. That is nasty. Really, with Tony, you could just pick a fight out of a hat and chances are it was absolutely incredible. Number four, Robbie Lawler. Robbie Lawler is a different breed. I mean, generally all fighters are, but really Robbie is something else because not only has he been fighting like an absolute maniac for almost 20 years, but after 11 with everyone counting him out, he managed to produce one of the most successful and exciting runs you'll ever see. Beginning with trouncings of Josh Koscheck and Bobby Volker, he found himself vying for the UFC welterweight title against Johnny Hendricks. And while he won the fight of the night and deserving so he didn't actually capture the title. He would, however, get a rematch after stopping Jake Ellenberger and then Matt Brown in that kind of fight only they could produce. This time he won the belt, fight of the night and fight of the year. And that's what truly made his spell stand out. His performances, tenacity and mean streak were just otherworldly and this was highlighted in his first two title defenses against Rory McDonald and Carlos Condit. And to be honest, no words can do justice to those absolute masterpieces. And I haven't even mentioned anything he did before his return to the UFC just incredible. Number three, Diego Sanchez. Thanks to his choice of life coach, Diego Sanchez has become a bit of a punchline recently. 
Diego's such a strange guy, man. He might believe that this dude has mass magic powers. And that's quite sad because older fans will correctly remember him as an absolute barbarian. And that is most certainly a compliment. He got a lot of attention on the Ultimate Fighter Season 1, but it was primarily for the mad personality that he showed there. He was, however, obviously a good grappler, but nobody could predict that he would transform into the kind of fighter he eventually became. For the best part of the next 15 years, Sanchez fought with an unparalleled blood and gut style, which produced many classics like his fights against Cara Parisian, Clay Guida, Joe Stevenson, and Gilbert Melendez, and all of them of the same genre. What are brawls that undoubtedly stole years from their lives and careers to the point that it's shocking Sanchez is still competing today. Number two, Vandalay Silva. Only in MMA can you get away with calling someone the axe murderer as a time of endearment. But hey, if the shoe fits, I guess. Beginning his career in bare knuckle valley Tudo fights, Silver style never really changed, it just got way scarier. And MMA fans just ate it up, especially his work from Pride in 2000 and beyond. Amped by the most badass entrance in the entire MMA game, he habitually fought like he was playing a different game than everyone else. It was as if it was just finish or bust and that judges didn't exist because he never seemed content with anything but a vicious blitzing and he put his own well-being on the line to achieve it. So whether it was a triumphant drubbing like his numerous encounters with Kazuchi Sakuraba or an unsuccessful classic against Chuck Liddell, his approach was consistent and it's cliche sure but a Vandalay Silver fight was always a matter of kill or be killed. And number one, Justin Gaethje. We've had the zombies, killers, and axe murderers, who I guess are technically killers, but it's only fitting that we finish with the highlight. Since joining the UFC ranks, Justin Gaethje has had seven bouts, yet he has earned a whopping nine bonuses. And that is all thanks to that mad approach. Despite an NCAA Division I wrestling pedigree, he's known for his patented brand of aggressive striking. But there is a method behind the madness. Having such experience in the grappling arts, he intimately knows just how taxing it can be, especially the way he does it. Plus, he just really loves to scrap, a fact that he never fails to mention after going through one of his absolutely violent battles. I go in there and I, I go to a special place. Once it starts, it's a blur for me. You know, I'm, I'm a competitor. I've been competing since I was four years old. But it has served him well thus far. And that's in part why he's number one in my book. Because not only is he the most exciting fighter in the UFC right now, but he's doing it against the elite of the toughest division. And right now, he's winning more often than not, despite taking massive damage en route. And that was highlighted in his spectacular interim title win against Tony Ferguson earlier this year, where he, not Tony, was the boogeyman that night. And Jesus Christ, what a boogeyman he was. Again, I just want to say a massive thank you to our sponsor, Origin, a company powered by the lifestyle of decorated retired Navy SEAL officer Jocko Willink. There's no doubt this is an incredibly exciting partnership for us with a brand that we absolutely love. If you're a fan of MMA, you're no doubt a fan of the dedication and the work ethic these athletes drive themselves through each and every day. And a major part of that lifestyle is their world-class nutrition. Origin is a company providing this world-class nutrition via Jocko's very own formula of protein, energy drinks, and supplements. If you're like me and have tried almost every protein powder and still not quite happy, Origin and Jocko Mulk is honestly the answer with a blend of whey protein, whey isolate, casein, and egg. Origin's whey protein powder fuels growth and muscle recovery like no other. There's no added sugar, no artificial flavor. It basically gives you everything you want and nothing you don't. And it also comes in a variation of powerhouse flavors like Vanilla Gorilla, Strawberry Slayer, and my personal favorite, Chocolate Peanut Butter. With a partnership like this, with a brand that we love, opens up a lot of doors to bring you guys new and exciting content. So please do head over to originmain.com, check them out and use your MMA on point 20 code for the best nutrition in the game. Thanks so much to Rob Pallon for writing this list. You can follow him at the Rob Pallon. And thanks so much to Max Randall for editing it. You can follow him at Max underscore Randall.
Also, thanks so much to the man Ben Rosette, composer of the intro music. Please go check out his music by clicking the link in the description below and catch the latest updates on his Instagram and Twitter page at Ben Rosette. Thanks for watching that video. Please do like and subscribe. We upload three jaw-droppingly juicy MMA videos a week to get your teeth into and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to follow us at On Point MMA and Tom A. Ransom on Twitter and you make sure you have a great day.